I felt like something was still missing. Like there was a part of me that was like, is this it? Like, mm. that's it. Okay. Like the high just dropped almost yeah. like I assume a drug where it's like, oh, now what? Yeah. And that's scary because that put me on a whole pursuit of studying fulfillment and like realizing that my desires have to be bigger than just my work and my brand. And I want a family and I want these other things because I feel like I was putting so much pressure on like this event better make me so happy. Yeah. And then I stepped off stage and I was like, okay, what's next? Like, mm -hmm. Clay's like, what do you mean? What's next? I'm like, I don't know. Like, what now? And he was like, whoa, like, take this in, celebrate this. And I was like, I don't know. Like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta start planning the next one, right? And that yeah. one has to have three thousand girls because then once I have three thousand girls in Chicago, which was gonna be the 2021, mm -hmm. which we all know what happened, then I'll be happy. Yeah. We're back, baby, with a brand new season of the It's Fucking Spiritual podcast. Join us each week as we have unfiltered conversations about how to transform your life. Our mission is to usher in a new era of spirituality where you don't have to be all love and light to live a life of alignment. Here, we honor all of it, the profound and the profane, the magic and the messy, and all things that make you human. So let's discuss the truth behind transformation and be unapologetic in our evolution. From manifestation to money, embodiment to energy, and all taboo topics, nothing is going to be off limits. Are you ready to live a life that feels just as good as it looks? Let's get fucking spiritual. Hey, what's up, you guys? And welcome back to another episode of the It's Fucking Spiritual podcast. Today, you are in for a real treat as you join us on a girl talk, <laughs> just a girl talk episode. This was such a fun episode to film. We have one of my dear friends, Angie Lee, with us, who for many of you probably doesn't even need an introduction. She has been in this world and this work for many, many years now, and she's actually someone who was a huge part of my own journey of transformation and one of the biggest reasons why I'm actually sitting here today. So you guys are going to hear our backstory um, and the way that she has just been such a catalyst in my life and get to jam with, with us on just all things comparison, on all things like living outside of the box, doing what it is that you want to do. And um, hopefully that you will feel very inspired and just excited to chase after your dreams and know that you are not alone on your journey of becoming the best version of yourself. And this episode, we got really candid. And this is something that I love Angie for and why so many people love her so much is because she's just so freaking honest. She's authentic, um, even though that's such a buzzword. Like, she is. She's really real, and she gets really real on this episode of um, the things that have been challenging for her, what she's gone through in her own life, um, and is really, really honest on what it takes to actually be an entrepreneur and to create a brand and to create um, something that you are passionate about. And I think this is a really refreshing episode for anybody that, um, yeah, wants to chase after their dreams. And I didn't even mention what Angie does, but if you don't know Angie, definitely go follow her in, uh, in the show notes. We have her Instagram. She has built a huge eight-figure company, uh, Soul, that is a CBD brand, which I use all of the products. And we have a code for you in the show notes if you're interested in checking out her gummies, her sleepy drink, which is the drink that I love. She's also ha a podcaster. The Angie Lee Show has 15 million downloads. She has run events and um, courses. I mean, this woman has done it all. So um, I could list off her list of accolades, but honestly, the thing that just makes her so amazing is her commitment to her own truth, her commitment to joy, her commitment to comedy, and the refreshing refreshing nature, I think, that she brings to social media. So let's dive in. This is a girl chat. I don't even think I asked her a single question on the episode. So you're just getting to hang out with us as if you are here sitting on the couch, sitting in this room with us, and get to hear our innermost conversations, which so this is exactly what it sounds like both on and off camera when we chat. So welcome into our world, our minds, and uh, welcome back to the show. <laughs> okay, I wrote out, I like don't even really need I to know. write out an intro for you. You could do it later or whatever. Or, oh, you like to do it when you're with a person? Oh. Sometimes I like to do it when I'm with a person, but sometimes <laughs> I don't. Like Lover of 
dance, curious about MDMA. Uh -huh. And sunning her butthole. <laughs> Welcome to It's Fucking Spiritual. Angie Lee, everybody. Okay, I'll do it after. <laughs> okay, I don't know. Okay. I just like always feel bad making people do it right away on the spot. You know, I'm like, you could do it later. I usually do it on the spot. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I'll, I'll literally like, I make little notes and then you're I'm like, pro. let me like try to remember this. Okay. I'm very impressed with your podcasting skills. Really? Yeah, you're very like on it. You're just like very. Oh, I appreciate that. Wow, that means a lot. <laughs> okay. I feel like we already started our podcast downstairs. So now I'm like waiting on, I need to like reorient. I, know, I was space. giving you, well, not you, but I was giving good dating advice for the single Really ladies. good dating advice. Yeah. yeah. It was really good. Okay. Wait. <laughs> we did this last time too, where all of a sudden we just started talking. Like yeah. That. I think so it's perfect of the though. Podcast. Okay. I think it's perfect to just start versus like, you know. <sighs> to align our chakras. Okay. Okay. <laughs> align our buttholes yeah. and our chakras. Our root chakra. <sighs> I did go to a, um, like a card reader lady once and she told me that my sacral chakra is what needs work. Oh, it's so. like the sexual energy, creativity. Oh, or like your root. Your, your root is underneath your sacral. I think that was the one she said. No, oops. No, no, no. That one is fine. It was on the <laughs> solar plexus. Solar plexus. Uh -huh. so it's like right here, right? Yep. That's this. What? Yeah. This? And it's like your center. It's like more the masculine, like, uh, like your power, your confidence, your mm -hmm. like, uh, structure, structure. like pursuing things. Yeah. That's so funny because that's actually what I ironically needed to work more on and mm -hmm. I have been and I actually have felt so much better since working on that, which oh, usually I, I feel like for a lot of women, it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. But I was going too far into the other way. Into the feminine? Yeah, almost where I could get like um, airy fairy, loosey goosey. You're like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, <laughs> like almost like I don't give a fuck too much. And yeah. then it's like there's no structure and actually it's proven that structure and – um having some responsibility and pursuing things brings joy because we feel like we are actually pursuing something. Mm. I've been studying this a lot lately. Like true self-love is not like, oh, bubble baths. That's self-care. Yeah. yeah. And I've been studying a lot about the difference between mm. self-care and self-love. I do a lot of self-care. I was not doing self-love. Yeah. Wow. Isn't that fascinating? That is so fascinating. Yeah. I'm very confident, but I was not doing self-love. And I thought, oh, I'm, I'm getting massages. I'm getting lymphatic facials. I'm spending so much money and time on on my self-care. What do wow. you mean? I must be fine, right? And I realized that what true self-love is, I found this woman's YouTube channel about this and she changed my life last month, but um, true self-love is when you are sticking to your word. You're yeah. doing what you say you're going to do. You're mm -hmm. pursuing the thing you say you're going to do. It's the unsexy stuff, but actually is what makes us an adult yeah. and actually is what helps us to feel confident as women. And so I'm working on that a lot right now wow. to then improve my I relationship. That. I am too. Discipline and devotion. And that's yes. the masculine and feminine side of actually just like doing what you said that you're going to do. Discipline and devotion. So yeah. Good. And I've so always good. avoided that. And I think especially as a creative, there's this uh, fallacy that if you're creative, you can't have any structure to that. But actually yeah. where true freedom lies is in the – the the structure because once you have that down then you can go be free yeah but i was under this illusion of if i have anything in structure or if i'm any you know any bit masculine then i'm not free yeah because true feminine is oh man if only i could just be on a beach somewhere eating mangoes with no job and just my titties out right like and i'm just a nomad nice. right it's like ooh, that's freedom and this woman was really yeah. breaking down how that actually is the fastest path to being miserable as a mm -hmm. woman is to thinking that you want no responsibility yeah. you want no constraints. You want no job. You want no man. You just want nothing. You just want to be. And it's like, okay, yeah, there's moments of our day where I'm definitely like in the feminine being, but also like that isn't, that isn't the path to happiness. And I think I was under this illusion for a little bit that that's what was going to make me happy. Mm, and her whole thing yeah. is like, no, my most miserable clients are the ones who go and do that because they think that's where freedom is. And she's like, freedom actually lies on the other side of you, like doing what you say you're going to do, like pursuing yeah. things with passion and like having some of that energy. I don't call mm. it I guess it's masculine. I consider it more just like fire. I don't yeah. know, like fiery, like totally taking care of your shit kind of energy. So I've had this whole awakening around wow. self-care and self-love. And I'm like, fuck, I was just doing a lot of self-care. Mm -hmm. But then I wasn't happy still. And yeah. I was like, I'm doing all the bubble baths. Like, right. why am I not relaxed? Wow. Oh, okay. because I didn't I actually this. pursue my to-do list today. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't follow through on the things I said I was going to do. Yes. Mm, okay, this mm. – I love this. I love this so much. I feel like we need to back up because people, okay, are, yeah. people are going to be like, what's happening? You can also move this to another part, whatever. <laughs> we will. We will. We'll, we'll chop it up. My team will chop it up. Yeah, I, you can move um, it. But it will be great. Okay, so 
wow, there's like a lot of things that I want us to talk about because we, I want to give the people some we context. We need a show. I feel like we need a show. I would love that. <laughs> should we just have a show? We should totally welcome to our show. So welcome to our show. And she's now co-host. We need to, <laughs> maybe we'll rename it. Yeah, <laughs> it's fucking baby grandma. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's the we'll fucking work. girl's bathroom. Gonna, there we go. It's the fucking yeah. girl's bathroom. Ooh, that sounds, that sounds wrong though. <laughs> Like a sex house okay. or something. Yeah. Oh my god, I love this. Yeah. Um, wait, is that going to be the name of your new? I don't know. I've thought about it. I think or it's is fun. it going to be? I don't want to say what the other name was going to be. That's more for an event. That wouldn't be for a show. But the- a show. The- <laughs> oh, <laughs> that one. Oh, I was thinking the R word. Okay. Oh, yeah, no. It's either. I'm not going to say either. It's either that or the girls' bathroom. Okay. Yeah. Oh wow. They're both so good. You guys will find out. Yeah, you'll find out. You haven't launched it yet, right? No, it's 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 just my name right now okay. until I'm like really clear on it because yeah, I just want to feel like good on it. But either one is so fun and good. I think the um the titty, I'll just say the titties one. I think calm your tits is better for like the okay. The, so we are allowed to say yeah, whatever. Okay. We'll say it is okay. is better for almost like the name of the hotline when people call in or something, or it's like a segment or a season oh, that's and good. the merch. I don't know if I need it to be the whole pod name. I actually think. The reason I like the girls' bathroom is because it totally encapsulates like what happens in the girls' bathroom. Mm-hmm. Real deal conversations. Like it's just raw. It's real. Like that's where yeah. you meet your new best friend. Like all the good shit goes down yeah. in the girls' bathroom. And yeah. I feel like it instantly makes sense of what it's about. Like, oh, yeah. girl chat. So it's that's so why good. I like that. And also I like talking about poop, you know. Yeah. So. It, poop, sunning <laughs> buttholes, sunning your butthole. I love buttholes. Calming your tits. <laughs> <laughs> all of the things. Yeah. Okay, this is so good. So let's, I'm going to back up yeah. and I'm going give, to give the listeners some fucking context. So you guys, we <laughs> have been sitting on my floor downstairs for like a solid hour and a half. Yeah. Just like, we should have filmed it because yeah. it would have been a great chat because we were talking about relationships. We yeah. were talking about events. We were talking about, like, we, t- I feel like we connect a lot on like yeah. not wanting to be in like one box and, yeah. you know, b- being creators and Angie, like you have done so much stuff in your career. And I also want to tell everyone, you know, that my relationship with how you were a big part of my story, yeah. but we're going to tell that again here in a minute. Yeah. Um, but I feel like I've watched you evolve so mm-hmm. much and you've been a part of my own evolution yeah. and like you are so permission giving for people of just like being yourself and like, I can be sassy and I can be funny and I can be humorous and I also can be deep in moments and like bringing a levity and joy and fun um, to even like the healing space or the self-development space. Like I love how much permission you give mm. to people. And so, so sweet. yeah, that wasn't ever even my plan, but so it's so sweet. It but just, you do it through your energy. Yeah. I'm like, I don't even know how I'm doing that. I and guess. through being yourself, yeah. which yeah. is how you built your brand. And, and you've gone through so many different seasons. I mean, you're like, very seasoned entrepreneur. You yeah. create products in Seoul, which I almost was going to be like, bring some products so we can show them. But because I'm completely out because I actually genuinely love the products. Oh, downstairs I have yeah. um, the sleep drink. Oh my God. Yeah, I brought the sleep drink for you. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. You know, yeah. that's my favorite yeah. thing. It's, yeah. I'm out of it. Yeah. And I didn't want to be like, hey, Angie, bring me no, more of course. Products. I have like a warehouse in my garage pretty much of shit. It's like so sitting good. there. So yeah. good. So you've done so many different things, yeah. I feel like, in your your life and built a brand and done events and have a big podcast. And um, yeah, you bring so much joy to so many people. And so I have a lot of different things I want to talk about today, but I do want to tell the people the story of how you were in my life. Yeah. So you guys, Angie knows this, but I tell the story here on the podcast about how I got into this work. Mm -hmm. And six years ago, I fractured my leg, my knee, And I like working a dead end corporate job, blacking out an alcohol on the weekends, just partying, like had no direction in my life whatsoever. I was 23 years old and I laid in bed and I Googled how to be happy and I found self-development. That was like my entrance into this work, which is like so cute. I'm going to get emotional. That's like so sad, but also so beautiful. Yeah. But that if you're at the point where you're Googling how to be be happy, happy. like you're in a bad place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And what's what's fucked is that's like a lot of It's a lot of people. Yeah. It's a lot of the world. And it's so real. And I also didn't start like knowing what to do or knowing um, – I had never even heard the term self-development, like mm-hmm. none of it. You know, I did – I had no framework for that. And I found your show. You were what – you and Lori Harder yeah. were for two of the first people I ever found. And I'm like laying in bed being like, I'm going to listen to these girls because they like know – what they're talking about and it, like you guys were like famous to me you yeah. know you know what I mean it's like so interesting because people listen to this show and like feel that way about yeah. and it's very strange to because I were like not yeah famous yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> but you know you think yeah, that yeah right and so I'm like laying in bed and I'm listening to your podcast and 
then I, I go off, I quit my job. I'm like, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. And, you know, it's like, I yeah. listen to your show. And maybe eight months later, you were doing your first event, Pays to Be Brave. Yeah. It was your very first one. Yeah. And you said on a, a podcast, like, I was listening to it on a Tuesday. Your event was that weekend. And you were like, you guys, my event is this weekend. Like, if you feel like you need to be there, like, you need to just do it. Go, you're like selling this whole thing, right? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I need to. You were the girl who I was talking to you. <laughs> and you're like, I was fully marketed. Wow. It worked, it worked. But in perfect, oh right? Gosh, yeah. It was great. And I, I, I bought my ticket right then. Flew out on Thursday, two days later, stayed with these random girls that I met in a Facebook group, like no contacts. I'm like, I'm not an entrepreneur. Like, I'm not going to be like, welcome in this, you know, like yeah. kind of thing. I love that you went and you weren't an entrepreneur I yet. Yeah, I wasn't an entrepreneur yet at all. I was just like listening to everybody and Lori was going to be there as a speaker. And I was like, oh, it's everybody. Ever. Wow, I'm going to be in the same room as them, which is like so cute. Yes. And like, I love now that we're sitting here yeah. and like friends and talking yeah. about it. It's like it's so funny, like the full circle moment. Wow. But we met at a meet and greet. Oh my gosh, wow. Yeah, like you yeah. had like a meet and greet or something. Yes, we have a picture. Did, did I show you this picture? But we look so different. Well, we you look especially so look so different. So well, your hair was a different color, I think, so right? So different. Oh, because you, no, you had a spray tan. Oh yeah, I always spray, yeah. <laughs> that was it, no, I'm Sp serious. Spray tans that, were. I'm serious, you're, you're, you actually look different because your like, skin was so dark. So in the, dark. Yeah, there we so go. So dark, I did look yeah. very different. Wait, how do we, I had a spray tan this? then too, so. We all, I was in my spray tan phase. Spray tan era, was this 20? 18? 18. Not like, like long ago, but not that long ago. 2018, it was November. Oh my God, you're going through your. Oh, I'm going. We are, look, we are going to look oh at this. My and God. I'm going to, I'm going to clip it in. I'm going to send this to my producer. We're going to clip it in. Okay. Yeah. I think you texted it to me or something. I must I, have. I, I think I know what this picture looks like. January, it's so cute. When, when was this? Little March, baby. April. So you were like 24 November. years old? 25? I was, I had just turned 24. Okay. Oh my God. I yeah. love that you went and you weren't an entrepreneur. I love that I made yep. it feel safe enough for you to you go did. because that's my big thing is I don't want it. I don't want women to think it has to be for entrepreneurs. That's why I've been using the term ambitious women more so. Yeah. Because I think you can work any job and be ambitious. It doesn't have to be entrepreneurship. 100%. So now even all my positioning is like, if you're ambitious or a dreamer, mm -hmm. like want to have fun or improve your life, it's not yes. like entrepreneurship. You may look at this. Look at this. It's not, you're not in it, but it's like me <laughs> in front of like the soul. No way. Let me see. Wait, there's. All of these, yeah, we were like, take, oh my God, here it is. Oh my here God, we man. are. <laughs> is that you? Yeah, isn't that weird? I had hair extensions. I had, like, I was, I was, yeah, going, I was going through like, it. Yeah, like you, you, it's so crazy how, like, I always think it's so fascinating how the physical body is the yeah. manifestation. Like, just even energetically, like, mm -hmm. this isn't you. I know. Not in a bad way. She's super but, cute. Like, yeah, it's a very cute girl. Very different. It's just not you. Yeah. Like, I actually wouldn't even think that's you. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your I hair's... have gotten a nose job since then. Too. You're like, actually, okay, <laughs> nose job, took out the extensions and no spray tan. Oh my God, you have to text me all these. Wow. Oh my God, I, will. I will. I will. It's really They cute. get me emotional though. I, I don't know, know why. But oh then my God, look at the live. It's alive. I'm laughing. It's so cute. And you're like brushing your hair. Oh my God. I'm like, I'm like oh my God, I'm meeting Angelique. Which is like so funny and so cute. Oh, and And, wow. but from that event, the girls I stayed with. Yeah where I had told them I was sitting on this idea for three years, like, I want to start a blog or like, I want to maybe start a podcast one day or like, I want to do something, yeah. but I'm so scared and I'm so scared to share my story and like yeah. all of these things. And they were like, if you don't leave here, like you have to leave here posting your first story or your first wow. post on Instagram and telling your story and do not leave here until you do it. So because of your event, I started my brand, which I, it wasn't a brand at the time. I posted my first photo yeah. that now six years but later has turned starts. to all of this. And I tell that story for everybody listening because like, and to you, yeah. I know you've heard it before, but like, again, yeah, but because of the impact that we have yeah. when we show up yeah, and the impact, like we have no idea the ripple effect that that no creates, idea. you know, like you had no clue, no. right? Until now, years later, now we're sitting here and, yeah. in similar friend groups and like yeah. you've heard the story and all of that stuff. But it's just funny. Like you never know what you can create in your life. And also what you're doing for other people just by being yourself and sharing your story. Yeah, I and, have no idea. Because then you think like, what was the point? That cost me so much to put on. Like, mm -hmm. I know girls had fun, but like, it isn't until I hear these stories that I'm like, oh my God, it was worth it. It makes me want to do it again. Yeah. Because how many women now are 23 year olds listening to this who yeah. are in the situation we were both in in early mm -hmm. 20s who lost, confused, didn't know what we were doing. So as much yeah. as I think like, oh, isn't everybody over that? It's like, no, we've grown, but mm -hmm. there's millions and millions and millions and millions of women who were right. you a few years ago. Yeah. And me when I was like 20. So it's almost like, I forget that because yeah. I assume everybody is in the same spot I'm right. at. But you yeah. forget your ideal customer and or mm -hmm. the people that you want to reach. They're not 
in the same place as you. Yeah. So it's like such a good reminder of like um, humility and also like, wait, like this is this is needed. And it makes yeah. me feel like it was all worth it because those events were a lot. Yeah. So I'm like, oh my God, if it even impacted one person mm-hmm. to then now you've impacted so many people because of the ripple effect. Yeah. God, it's so cool. Cry. So I just acknowledge yeah. you so much. Thanks That's, for showing up. Yeah. And and it's so beautiful. And that moss wall, funny story. Yeah. That moss wall. Oh God, I was so stupid. I just like threw money like it was water. I could have just went on, you know, freaking Craigslist and found some dude to put together a moss wall for like a hundred bucks. I'm sure I could have. But instead I was just like, oh, this event has to be perfect. I paid $10,000 for that moss wall we're standing in front of. Yeah. And then they just take it down. You don't even get to keep it. And I remember my ex at the time, the whole joke was the moss wall. And so now with like um, my ex at the time, it was a joke. And then Sam Skelly and I will also joke all the time. She's like, dude, remember that time you spent $10,000 on the fucking (laughs) moss moss wall? wall? Just like a moss wall that they come and set up and then they take it away and you never see it again. It was all just for the photos. And I'm like, looking back, I would have been smarter with my finance my finances about the yeah. event but whatever well aren't we moss all wall. looking back but now you need a moss wall at the next event <laughs> i know i need it again i'm like shit i need a moss wall Who can but make- that's not 10 grand yeah that's just yeah. too much for a fucking moss wall yeah oh my god i love that <laughs> i love it it's, and, and it's so funny because it's like all the things that go on behind the scenes that you like don't even yep. know and don't even realize that like, haunts me still i would yep. love that 10 grand back <laughs> it's okay you'll yeah. make it you'll, yeah I, you'll make it up yeah it'll, it'll be fine <laughs> it'll be just fine yeah um oh, yeah. but it's just so good and i wanted to tell that story yeah. so that the listeners can know the background and just like be inspired too because it is so true. Like we forget, I think now being where we are, yeah. where the, there's so many people, a majority of people are like sitting there and being like, what should I do? How to be happy? Like I'm listening yeah. to these podcasts and I think it's just, I want to be so inspiring for other people to know that like if you have something in your heart and like you want to create something, all you have to do is like be willing to be messy, be willing to put yourself out there and be yourself. Yeah. And I remember at that event, I was like, I'm going to write myself into this narrative. I'm going to share my story. One day I'm going to be doing these things, One, you know, and it's like now we're sitting here. And so it's just this beautiful, like yeah. full circle moment. And your your mentality, like my mentality has changed so much since yeah. then. Like you realize God. like what you once thought was like not. Well, it's crazy to think how crazy. much can happen in what, seven years? Mm, six. Six? Yeah. Dude, I'm 34. That gives me so much hope, Hope, but not that I'm in a bad place right now, but I'm like, <laughs> damn, like who I'm going to be at 40? That's yeah. in six years. Yeah. I'm like, so much can happen in six years. Yeah. I mean, I'm hoping I have, you know, a few kids, gain some more knowledge, but like that, that's six years away now. Mm-hmm. So I'm almost thinking, what was six years ago for, wow. Yeah. That just shows people also listening, like you can change your life so much in just a few years. Yeah. You will literally, you could literally be a different mm-hmm. person in even two years, yeah. one year. I always think that even a year. I'm like, damn, what, mm-hmm. what can happen in this, in these next 12 yeah. months? Yeah. So much. So much. And I mean, my life changed drastically just in, in two years. I mean, three within three years, this show was launched. And then like, you know, so yeah. it's it can change so, so much. So thank you yeah. for being you. Aww. And thanks for when you told me that last time I went home right away and I told Clay, I was like, Clay, I need to do events again. He was like, I know. I tell you every day. And I'm like, I don't, I just feel like I don't acknowledge that it helps people, you know? Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, dude. And I'm like, I'm like, I know it. I see the DMs and like, I loved your event. Met my best, mm-hmm. met my best friend. But like, you just, I don't know. It doesn't feel real. Like, are they yeah. just sending this to be nice? Yeah. But then lately it's like more and more people have been sending me this and it's kind of like God or whatever is like, yo, like mm-hmm. you, like you like creating live experiences. Not only do I love it, but like I, I, there's a magic in that yeah. that I think I'm here to facilitate that mm-hmm. I just take lightly and think it's stupid or no one cares or like, I'm so nervous. Like who's going to come to my next one again? It's been a few years since I've done one. Mm-hmm. But then I'm like, fuck it. Like there, there has to be a reason why I was called to do them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Cause I'm scared to do another one now. I'm like, Oh my God, what if like nobody, but my mom shows up? See, okay. Can <laughs> I go into that? Because yeah, I, I, really, love... I really think like 10 people are going to show up. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> what's so crazy is people are going to listen to this. And I'm sure so many people listening to my podcast, follow you, know yeah. you, like, you know, a lot of people know who you are. It's like mm-hmm. people would be like what Angie's worried that people won't show up to oh, her event. Yeah. And it's been think... four years since yeah. the last one though, dude. Yeah. I literally think like, it's gonna be like you, my mom, you and my friends, Clay in the back. And I'll be like, oh, I spent $100,000 on this spot. No, I guess, I don't know. It's the limiting beliefs So like, it's like um, somebody who was really good at baseball and he's trying to hit the ball again. Like, yeah. oh, am I still good at it? What if people think I suck mm-hmm. now? Like, what if, I don't know, but yet I have still the people and then I have, the, you know, I, I don't know why I think, I don't know. Yeah. I just think like they won't, they won't come again. Like, what yeah. if they're like, oh, I don't, I don't want to go again. It's been too long. But it's like, no, women, if anything, are craving it more after what we went through from 2020 to 2022 in the world. Yeah. So I think I need to remember that people want live experiences more than ever. But yeah, I'm afraid. That would be my biggest fear because I was sitting with it 
I was, I was doing some like deep inner work and I was like, what's your biggest fear, Angie? Like, what is it really? Yeah. Like, is it the money? Is it really putting the money into the event? Is it losing money? What are you afraid of? And I was like, oh, I'm afraid no one will show up. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm literally a woman who put on an event. My last event was a thousand people in a huge stadium. Like I was crushing it, like humbly. Like I was one of the best at that thing, mm -hmm. right? I wasn't amazing at everything, but I was like crushing it. And here I am telling you, I'm afraid no one's going to show up. Like yeah. that, that is real. And I think that we assume that because somebody's done something once that they just don't deal with this. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, it gets, it, if anything, it gets worse almost. Like your yeah. confidence because you have so much to, now I got to have a thousand women again and mm -hmm. oh my God. And so for the woman listening who wants to put on an event for four people, dude, it's not like once you have a thousand, you think, oh, okay, now I'm set for life. And now yeah. I always know. It's like, no, it's still going to take a lot of work to promote. And I still have to battle the fears of will people show up? What, what, what if they don't like it? Da, da, da. And so that's so interesting. I never assumed that would happen, but I'm like, damn, I, that's my biggest fear. Yeah. Oh, which I, is like, what? <laughs> I love that you're willing to share that though, because yeah. that's the humanness element of it. And I think that we live in this like world and society where like you see the highlight reel of the highlight reel on social media. And there's this like idea that if somebody has the followers or yeah. if somebody has, you know, created a lot of success or they've built the seven figure brands or they've mm -hmm. done it before, then, oh, they must have it in the bag. Okay. Or like they, you know, look at you or look at me as like, we're sitting in front of cameras, we're on stage where we're like confident or something. So yeah. then you have this like illusion yeah. that they don't have the same human feelings yeah. that we do. And I think that's why, or, or yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> they, don't, they, they think that we don't have the same human feelings that they might have, right? Yeah. And and it's like, that's why I think these conversations are so important because no, you, I don't think you ever get over the human component of it because I certainly feel that way. I mean, I feel like it almost, I was trying to dance with it and say like, but isn't that kind of what makes it fun? Mm -hmm. It's like that little bit of that like dopamine hit of like, ooh, who's going to show up? Ooh, mm -hmm. like let's see if I could do this again. Almost like a game where it's like, okay, then don't do it, Angie. Like I almost played out the whole scenario. I'm like, okay. You think no one's going to show up, then don't do it. Yeah. And it was like, wait, that also sucks. That <laughs> feels like I'm just like not even showing up to the plate. Yeah. And that feels like not good in my body either because of course no one's going to show up if I don't do it at all. Yeah. So then I was like, okay, you literally have two choices. Like be a fucking big girl and like believe in yourself again and do it or all right, don't do it. And then no one will show up because it's not even a thing. Yeah. And that's what we're always dancing with, you know? And mm -hmm. I feel like it's the same thing with money. You you can make a ton of money and then feel like, shit, can I do it again? Yeah. Because it's one thing to make money once, but can I do it again? Like, that's mm -hmm. a real fear, too. So yeah. I think people assume in entrepreneurship, once you've made money once or have had success or followers once, it's it's not like then, oh, okay, now I'm set. You yeah. constantly still have to be like, okay, can I do it again? Right. <laughs> right. And like battling the next things that are coming up at the next level that you're at or at yeah. the next, like, oh, my God, I, I talk about that, too, because I felt like I always thought once I get the things on my vision board or like once I get in the rooms or like, you know, once I like have certain people on my podcast, like then I'm going to feel really good. And no, like yeah. that is not what happened to me. Yeah. Like when I moved to Austin, I got hit with a ton of bricks. Yeah. I think I told Isn't you that. Isn't that sad when you think like yeah. that one thing is going to be the thing that makes you happy? Yeah. And then you're like, oh, like I remember mm -hmm. thinking like if I could just have Tony Robbins on my show. Like I would be complete. Like I just was obsessed with him growing up. And now yeah. I just, I don't know. I resonate with some of the things he does. Obviously he's, yeah. He's Tony Robbins. He's the goat. But also, like, I don't know. I just, I feel like more of my stuff now is like I look up to like feminine leaders and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And so now it's funny when I'm like, if I could have on my show tomorrow, what I am like, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. And it's so weird to think like that can change is your perception mm -hmm. of like, Ooh, but, but if I just do that one thing, then I'll be happy. If I could mm -hmm. just interview Tony Robbins, then I'll be happy. Yeah. And now I'm like, eh. <laughs> yeah. Or you get the thing and you're like, I celebrated for 24 hours and now I feel like shit. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know if people know, like when I stepped off stage at the, tw the 2019 Paisley Brave, I stepped off stage and it was, it was fun because everybody was celebrating. My family was so excited. I mean, that was such a big dream of mine. I was at like the height of my career. And, and then I felt like something was still missing. Like there was mm. a part of me that was like, is this it? Like, mm. that's it. Okay. Like the high just dropped almost yeah. like I assume a drug where it's like, oh, now what? Yeah. And that's scary because that put me on a whole pursuit of studying fulfillment and like realizing that my desires have to be bigger than just my work and my brand. And I want a family and I want these other things because I feel like I was putting so much pressure on like this event better make me so happy. Yeah. And then I stepped off stage and I was like, okay, what's next? Like mm -hmm. Clay's like, what do you mean? What's next? I'm like, I don't know. Like what now? And he was like, whoa, like take this in, celebrate this. And I was like, I don't know. Like I gotta, I gotta, I gotta start planning the next one. Right. And that yeah. one has to have 3000 girls because then once I have 3000 girls in Chicago, which was going to be the 2021, mm -hmm which we all know what happened, then I'll be happy. Yeah. Well, let's be honest. The three is going to go to, well, then mm -hmm. what? That, what, what? What am I doing? Yeah. Like Avicii, his story is fascinating of a kid who was in a basement, just loved creating art, loved having fun and thought like, 
was was sold this idea and this illusion that if I just have these huge of huge um you know um if I go play as a DJ in front of these huge crowds with you know 50 60,000 people then I'll be happy and he he ended up killing himself he, yeah. he wasn't happy I'm not saying that has to be the route but it's like fulfillment isn't you, you got to find yeah. in other places mm -hmm. man it's not what we think it is yeah. <laughs> it's not in the like yeah. once I do this thing and check it off I'll be happy God, this is so perfect because this is what my entire season has been about oh, wow. since I like started because I was like, oh my God, the bar just kept moving. Like, can yeah. I do this much money in a month? Can I do that? Can I live in this house? Can I live da, da, da? The And then I'm like keeps moving. crying to in, like crying just myself to sleep at night in my like big, beautiful vision board house. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, this was not the fucking Dude, thing. I remember that. I've yeah. had that where I was in my beautiful house in San Diego and I just broke up with my ex. And Sam Skelly was my roommate at the time. She was out of town. And so I'm alone in this big, beautiful mansion on the beach in Solana Beach in San Diego. Our rent is like $17,000 a month, right? Mm -hmm. It is insane. I am like, I'm a few weeks after the event. I'm just like, this. Th I should be happy. I literally can see the ocean. I am in one of the most desirable cities in the world, San Diego. <clears throat> I am making like $100,000 a month. Like everything is just growing. Like it is just and I just am crying on the kitchen floor, like so depressed. And I remember looking around at like this nice marble kitchen and like all of these things. And I was like, holy shit, like this, this shit, this expensive furniture, this restoration mm -hmm. hardware, yeah. it's not making me happy. Yeah. I, like I thought the restoration hardware would make me happy. Yeah. I mean, it does for a second. <laughs> for like a minute. Yeah. It's pretty nice. <laughs> but like it didn't. And it was so scary and trippy because I yeah. was like, oh shit, I got to figure this out. Yeah. And I've been in situations where I've been in a house that's not as nice, but I'm happier. So like it mm -hmm. just shows like it doesn't, yeah, doesn't yeah. fill doesn't fill the hole if there is like a hole there. Yeah. So yeah. what does that look like for you now as you've been on yeah. your path to fulfillment and yeah. joy? Yeah. What have you found? I feel yeah. like I'm I'm putting it less into material things. Obviously, mm -hmm. like that's always step one. Mm -hmm. Is I think at the end of the day, it's got to be relationships, and that can be friendship, that can be romantic. That can be your kids. But for me, it's like the joy that I have, let's say, like, for example, the joy I have with, with Clay in my relationship, it needs to be so pure. And it's it's like that brings me so much happiness and, and joy. And like, it doesn't matter what house we're in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't care what house I'm in with him. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's something I'm working on too is like, like almost finding that I'm, I'm, I don't have this yet, but I'm finding this balance between like, okay, can I also have a life outside of business and like be well-rounded? But then also like, Something I've been studying as a woman, and I'm so curious your thoughts on this, mm -hmm. is like taking radical responsibility for my own joy and happiness just because I'm joyful and happy, not because of yeah. my partner, not because of the car I have or the money I made or the Instagram followers. Like that's what I'm really taking radical responsibility of right now is like I'm just fucking joyful because I'm happy and I, I have self-love and I'm happy mm -hmm. where I never really understood that. And I was putting a lot of pressure on my partner to fill that too. Mm -hmm. I was putting a ton of pressure basically on my career and my partner to always feel my happiness. Yeah. So that's why I was always in the same loop of like, it wasn't working out with guys. And then in my career, I wasn't happy. So now I'm like, okay, take those two things away. Am I happy? Mm -hmm. If I'm just like single and broke, am I happy? Like, yeah. which most people would say no, but like you need to almost get to a place where you can kind of like have it all stripped away in a sense. And you're yeah. like, I'm, I'm still good because it's actually not his responsibility to make me happy. Yeah, It's not. And I know that's hard pill to swallow. I actually don't even want to admit that because I, I like thinking like, no, like they're here to make me happy. Mm -hmm. But that's like codependency. Yeah. So that's something I'm working on right now. Even my relationship is like, oh, it's actually not his job to make me happy. It's mm -hmm. my job. And then he feels that energy and then we do better. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. I'm sure you've seen this in relationships where you're oh, like, yeah. <laughs> make me happy, make me happy. Like majority yeah. of women and the issues in relationships, I think are because women aren't fucking happy mm -hmm. with their career, their girl friendships, their health, any of it. So then they put it on their dude to make yeah. them happy. Like, oh, well, why aren't you feeling it for me? It's like, yeah. dude, that's actually our job. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, whoa, I've never thought about it this way. Now at 34, I'm like, mind blown. This is so good. But dude, the minute I did that, real talk, guys, is like new, fresh off the fresh off the press. The <laughs> minute I shifted, Clay and I yeah. knew better. Immediately, yeah. all of our fights stopped. Everything changed. Literally mm -hmm. almost overnight, he was like, what's happening? And I'm like, oh, I'm actually focusing on me being happy. Yeah. And focusing on my own shit instead of like being like naggy or like, you got to make me happy. Like that energy. Yeah. But I've been, I was trained that. I think a lot of us saw our moms do that. They've been told mm -hmm. like, you know, get married and then you'll be happy. It's like, I know millions of women who are married and they're not, still not happy. Yeah. Okay, have kids, you'll be happy. I have tons of friends who are moms. They're still not happy. Mm -hmm. So it's like, dude, there's something deeper going on there that I'm on the pursuit to figure out Yes. because I want it all. I want the great career. I want the kids soon. I want the marriage. Like, But I can't expect each of those things to actually inherently make me happy. Mm -hmm. 
And that was like a death to like my soul when I had to like let that go because I was expecting like, okay, Clay's going to make me happy. Okay. <clears throat> and then I'm going to have kids soon and they're going to make me happy. But like, that's a lot of pressure to put on these things. Even like kids, like that's not right. Like your kids are there to add to your life, but like not be like, you better make me happy because what if there's times where they don't? Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> and they're pissing you off. So oh, I don't know, dude. So I know. That's what I've been thinking about mm -hmm. lately a lot. I'm like, shit, what, what makes me happy then? Fuck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've been really into like walking this like, I guess you'd call feminine path over Ooh, the past yeah. year. Because there was this whole like boss babe era that yeah. like everybody came up in the boss babe era. <laughs> like, yeah. You were deep in the, I was like the deep, in, deep in the boss babe era. Um, you know, and it's this like, we're all going to retire our husband, <laughs> which is like, yeah. yeah, I'm like, no, don't fuck the polarity. Like, yeah. No, like no, the no. worst thing you could do for a man is take away his purpose. What is he going to do all day? Yeah. Fucking sweep yeah. and clean the kitchen and work for you? Yeah. No. 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 I feel, so, I'm sorry. I know there's girls who love it. I am yeah. sorry. How are yeah. you sleeping? Sleeping with him. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm just gonna say, like, right. it, it is. the attraction. I could sure. not have sex with a guy who literally I felt like, look, babe, I'm making millions and you do nothing all day. Uh -uh. It is yeah. proven biologically that men need purpose. And again, yeah. guys, I don't care if your husband Bob makes not a lot. It doesn't matter. It's about having a purpose and loving what he does. This is yeah. not about the financial number. It doesn't need to be, you don't need to be with some millionaire guy. No. Mm -hmm. Are you with a guy who wakes up and has some sort of purpose? Yeah. Because when you take that away from a man, they actually start to go crazy. Mm -hmm. And it's actually a man is supposed to go purpose first and then his marriage next. Because mm -hmm. when he can fulfill his purpose, he can be a better husband and dad to his family. And yeah. so you fuck with a man's purpose. Mm -hmm. I think you're fucking up nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, and, and it's also the man's job to align with his purpose too. Yeah. So it's like we can't take that from them but like if but there's this whole like culture of like emasculating the men where we don't even realize that's what we're doing wow. but you're like castrating the men did <laughs> you want to do that at one point like find a dude and then you could retire him oh yeah oh I, for the longest time, I was like, I'm gonna make my millions, and like my husband's gonna come work for me. Now it's so funny. Like, oh, I would. Oh, really he never. wanted him to work for you. Oh, then. I wanted okay. him to work for me. That's even worse, man. So now you bad. gotta. Like, I can't believe that. But like, that's what a lot of the there was like sold that in the com like in yeah. the online community. A lot of people were like bragging about like I'm making my 50k months, my 100k months, and like my husband now doesn't have to work. I saw a reel with it the other day. I yeah. got hit with it on the explore oh, page. Some girl, oh, she's like, no. my husband and I were so happy since I now retired him and I make 400 grand a month. I'm like, first of all, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you don't. You wouldn't be on Instagram, okay? You'd do other shit. But like, like second of all, you could see him in the background. Like, I'm like, is he happy? Yeah. I'm like, I yeah. want to DM him. You good, bro? And here's the thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, SOS. People don't even know that that's like, and here's the thing. Like, if yeah. that works for you, if that's yeah. your dynamic and that works for you, like, full props, yes. There's a few people who I think husband and wife can work can together. Work. It's very seldom, yeah. though. It's hard to work with your partner. You're already trying to be yeah. just their partner all day. Right. There's a few if you like have a lot of therapy and can figure it out. But but the rest, I, I think most people need to do their own thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think <laughs> I think the point like that I want to make inside of this conversation is like there was this expectation online yeah. in the girl boss era of like crush it, retire your husband, like overwork, and we actually masculinized women, yeah. and our culture has done that even just in like the feminist movement and like really really deep into I this love conversation this topic. yeah and and we actually masculinized women uh, and broken up like the nuclear family household and i'm not saying like if you want to have different dynamics like literally the last week we just had alexa about it john and we were talking about polyamory and all different relationship dynamics. i love her but, oh, i love her too. yeah i love her best. too oh my gosh anyway yeah. shout out alexa yeah. we love you <laughs> you know so like there's like if that works for you and you want to do open relationships, like that's yeah. a beautiful conversation. Awesome. I have nine husbands. That. Yeah, <laughs> we are polygamous. No, I'm just kidding. I gotta call my ninth husband in a bit. <laughs> it's not hard with nine of them. It's fine. I love that we, we're so like ADD. <laughs> And this is a totally different kind of episode because sometimes I'll have people here and I'm like, so tell me about like your deep yeah, spiritual yeah, yeah, yeah. awakening. And right now we're like, listen, yeah. our nine well, husbands I, that are waiting outside. I love that you can make fun of the spiritual yeah. shit because I think to be yeah. actually spiritual, you can make fun of the spiritual. What? Right. People that are offended by it, I'm like, dude, you're not actually spiritual then because why are yeah. you so offended? Like People it's, that it's get funny. offended, I've had people get offended by it's fucking spiritual and having fucking the title. I'm like, <laughs> that's, we're, we're, lo we're losing the plot, guys. <laughs> like that's the point. Like we're, we're on a floating rock. Wait, why? Like, Who's I don't it know. offending? Like the the oh the, people the spiritual like, I don't gods? think that's very like spiritual of you to like be you. Oh yeah, I've gotten oh, some that's of that. Great. It's really interesting. Oh, we should have I'm, a party with these girls. Yeah, <laughs> it's really weird. It's I'm sure so a person they'd actually you know be like, oh you're right, it's not a big deal. Yeah, it's not. But it's yeah. just there's this idea that you wow. have to be a certain way yeah. in certain. So anyway, okay, sorry. So, so you, you were talking about polyamory. <laughs> so 
<laughs> circling it back, going to like j- the idea of this like boss babe culture. When I started to study actually polarity and I started to study, because I'm like, why are my relationships not working? Yeah. You know, and making all this money, but yes. my relationships aren't working. My relationships aren't mm-hmm. working. And it was because I was emasculating the partners that I was with. I was competing with the partners that I was with. And I actually was fully in my masculine all the time, but I was burnt out. I was exhausted. I wasn't in my body. And I, yeah, I was making money. And yeah, my podcast was getting downloads. And like, I was getting in the rooms I thought that would make me feel better. And yeah, I'm not, I don't feel better. And why is that? And so then I started to walk this whole feminine path that you could say, which was really like my path of somatics and getting into my body and nervous mm-hmm. system. And like, yes, that was very serious, but yeah. it was also really healing yeah. because I started to understand the dynamics I was having inside of my relationships weren't actually fulfilling me and they weren't fulfilling the men that I was with because I was trying to be the man yeah. in my relationship. And now, now a part of me is like, and then I went through this whole thing that was like, I just want to like bake bread and like not work and yes. like someone take care of me. But then now to your point at yes. the beginning of the show of yeah. like that also wasn't fulfilling me because I wasn't my purpose. So now I'm like finding oh. the yeah. where's the balance of I get to show up and I get to serve but do it from a place of devotion and not like discipline on my to-do list. Yes. But like because I'm connected to the mission and I'm connected to my aliveness and I'm connected yeah. to like the frequency of like what I want to give to the world. Yeah. And then create from that place and then like chill and get to be with my partner and like yeah. let him like run the house because I don't fucking want to. <laughs> <laughs> Literally verbatim, yeah. Yeah. you you nailed it. Yeah. It's like what happened is we wanted to experience the fringes. Mm-hmm. I'm like someone who likes to experience the fringes mm-hmm. of life. I like want to go to the extreme so I know what I yeah. do and don't like. Yeah. So I did the same thing. Hardcore boss babe and then went to... I'm now on TikTok trad wife, sourdough. Yep. Like, you know what? Let's just <laughs> sourdough. Sourdough. Let's just like live in Dripping Springs. I'd probably have like three or four goats. Yeah. Let's have like six kids. And chickens. then, yeah, all these chickens. And Clay was like, yo, I got to be honest with you, Angie. That's actually not you either. Yeah. So I know you like that wasn't you, but this also isn't you. Mm-hmm. And my tattoo is literally of the ampersand and and sign. Yeah. He's like, the answer is in the middle. And I know you don't want to hear that because that's really hard, but you can be both. Like, I don't see you as masculine when you're creating, but I also don't see it empowering if you're not at all. Like, that's not attractive either. So I thought, like, come save me, damsel in distress. Right. Damsel in distress is, I argue, it's a little bit of like a, I don't know, insert in a trauma wound. I don't know. It's a little bit like, yeah. um, like it's needy, it's desperate, it's not fulfilling our purpose and sharing our gifts because, oh, someone come save me. Yeah. And that's where I can go into yeah, easily. Too. And now I've really worked on like, no, like, that's not who I am. And so there's a, there's got to be a way to create from a feminine energy. And I actually argue that creating content, we're doing it right now, is extremely feminine mm-hmm. because we're sharing our gifts yeah. and we're here to create, whether it's it's content, whether it's babies, like we're all here as, women's, as women to create things. Yeah. And so I think now I am finding that new energy of like, mm-hmm. how do I create from a place where like when I'm recording this video or making the funny reel or podcasting, it's not in this like, oh, I got to work and I'm a boss babe. Yeah. Like that, like that energy is that doesn't work with me and my partner. But how do I come from an energy right now where it just feels like fun and good? Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm working on right now. Because with my partner, it didn't work. He was like, yo, this isn't who I met. Because I went to the totally other side of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. He met me. I was like, on top of my career, da, da, da. He loved that. He was very attracted to the good parts of that. And then I went, like you said, oh, just like do everything for me. And I'm just going to lay here and be a blob. And like, I don't want to work again. I don't have to, da, da, da. And he was like, yo, like this is not good either. And I went into really bad depression because of it. Mm -hmm. And he was like, one of the worst things you could do is like give someone too much time and too much money. Because what I did is I just didn't do anything then and I became depressed. And so now I'm like finding this new energy again of like, no, 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 I get to work because I love it. I get to create because I love Mm -hmm. making people happy and joyful. And that doesn't make me masculine. Yeah. Like I was almost so afraid to do any work then. Yeah. Because I was like, I don't want to be a man. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, yo, it doesn't make you a man. Yeah. Like I'd rather see you on purpose than like fucking damsel in distress. Cause then I was putting totally. all of it on him to save me, make me happy, pay for everything. Like, oh my God. Mm-hmm. And he's just like, whoa, what's going on? Yeah. And I think I almost needed to experience that in a mm-hmm. sense, right? Yeah. I don't know. Why wow. do we have to go to the extremes? Is it to rebalance out, like to recalibrate our systems? I don't know. I think maybe we're extreme people. But, maybe. But extreme yeah. people. Or is it fucking social media and TikTok that sells you this idea? Because yeah, I feel like there's, totally, there's the two camps right now. There's yeah. the boss babe who lives at the airport because she's crushing it and about to go speak on stage and crush a meeting and sign a 10-figure deal. And she doesn't have kids by choice because yeah. hashtag childless by choice. And like, but I'm making the dough. Yeah. Or you've got the trad wife who's like, 
breastfeeding her three babies and then she's got her cow and she's like the simple life and yeah. then it's doing <laughs> it's the so dough true. and it's like dude nothing is simple about having four kids and yeah. running a farm yeah. i have i have a friend who doesn't she's like dude it's the most stressful masculine energy i've ever been in yeah but she's on a farm in dresses all day yeah. but it's she's running a fucking show she's got yeah. her four kids the house animals are a lot of work like it's not like right oh, trad wife in my little pink mm -hmm. dress so i was confused because i was like shit i gotta pick all right well i don't mm -hmm. want to be this one all right, I'll try this one. And then my partner, who knows me better than myself, I think sometimes we literally had a moment where he was like, I'm that's not you. I'm so yeah. sorry. Yeah. I am so sorry. You can cook a little bit more. I'd love that. But like, Angie, you were here to do some big shit. And like, yeah. you're not gonna go frolic in the field all yeah. day. But it's bless like now Clay. dancing, bless him. God, he's so <laughs> sane. Like men, I love that sometimes yeah. they can just come in with like the truth. So mm -hmm. now I'm really figuring out this dance before kids because I'd obviously love to be pregnant soon. So it's like this energy of like, I'm so glad I'm finding this before because I didn't want to like think that I had to go all one way or the other because I want to be the cool mom who's like, I'm a fucking awesome mom. And I'm also like a creative mm -hmm. and I'm so determined to figure out how to do both because yeah. I don't see a lot of women doing both really well. I see a yeah. few, but I don't actually have that many that I know. Yeah. Like a handful, but I, I want to see more. Do, do you feel like yeah. there's a lot? No. No, yeah. not, well, and I think I do think that's where people are going because I think what ended up happening is we, yeah, I think as, as like as a culture, and just it is human nature to swing the pendulum in the opposite direction when something doesn't work. So, yeah, right, okay. it was like, you know, that's where the feminist movement came in because it was like, no, we can all do. We like, can work we too. Can, we can work too. And that was great. We're not stupid. Beautiful, <laughs> right? But then that created a shift in dynamics, right? So then it's like finding, and it happened on social media with like you have the trad wife and then you, and you have the boss babe. And it's this, I, I think we have a tendency to like exist in extremes and want to put each other in boxes. And then now with the rise of social media, it's like, you see the highlight reel of someone's life. So then you're always comparing yourself to like, wait, should I maybe like do that and go like breastfeed and have my cow? <laughs> or should I, you know, or like, yeah. why am I, for me, it was like, oh, all my friends are, you know, getting engaged and getting married. And I did, was in my year of celibacy and so, I had to like turn off social media yeah. because, you know, and then I went like, I got so burnt out from trying to hustle and do and get myself in the right rooms. Yeah. And I was like, all of this fucking sucks. And actually half of y'all, I don't even like. <laughs> yeah, so no and offense. I was feeling the stress but, of the minute I moved to Austin. Yeah, I'm the last of some of my friends to have kids. So yeah. what do you think I felt immediately? Is, right. oh, I'm so behind. Yeah. Oh my God, I'm in my 30s. Mm -hmm. Holy shit. And it put so much pressure on it that yes, I genuinely want it, but it was coming from like an anxious, ugly right. energy. Right. That Clay was like, yo, this isn't like, I'm not feeling this. Like we're doing this on our own timeline. Totally. Not because like all your friends are pregnant right now, yeah. but it's hard and it's real. And this so is hard. even awkward to say out loud because women don't want to talk about it. But you can be equally so fucking stoked for your friend. And it's fucking hard to see that when you're like, yeah. oh, fuck, fuck. Wait, sh oh my God, you're already on your third kid. Oh my God, I'm the last of my friend group pretty much. Like, mm -hmm. ah, so then you feel like, oh, I need to get married. I need to have kids. And like now looking back, even Angie a year ago, I'm like, dude, why are you rushing getting engaged and getting married and having kids? What the fuck? You have the rest of your life to have all those things. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure when you're 80, you're gonna be like, why did I rush those things? Mm -hmm. Why? Like yeah. the worst thing a woman could do, I think, is to be rushing who they're getting married to. Oh. You gotta spend the rest of your life with this dude. Yeah. Do not rush it. Yeah. You guys spend the rest of your life with this dude and sign a piece of paper and like share your shit and your money and your kids. Like, no. Yeah. Right? Like, come on. So I'm so glad mm -hmm. that there was that really smart party that was like, oh my God, do not rush. Because you could have easily yeah. been like, I'll just find any dude. Right. Because you could get married next week to any totally. dude if you want to. Yeah. Right? Right. And instead you waited and now yeah. you you can edit this out. You met a good dude. <laughs> I didn't have a good dude. Right now. Can we, I don't know if you keep that in or <laughs> no, not. They know. They know. Oh, okay. like, I've like mentioned it. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm just not on the internet with my relationship yes. anymore after, you know, yeah. we don't do that. But you didn't rush it. You didn't anymore. try to meet him. You didn't yeah. push. You weren't like, I have to get married. Oh my God. Da, da, da. Right. I'm going to be 30. Like, because 30 all of a sudden is the age. What the heck? You're still yeah. so young. Like, yeah. I, I'm glad you did that because if not, yeah. there's this pressure now between 30 and 35 to somehow like, you got to get married. You've got to have kids. You've got to right. do all of it in that crunch time or you're yeah. a loser or you're behind because it's hard, dude. I'm mm -hmm. scrolling. I'm taking a shit in the morning. I'm like, oh, man, like, all the girls from my hometown are on their fourth kid. Like, is there yeah. something wrong with me? And they're all like envious of me because I like made this money and had this career. And I'm all like, oh, but you had the kids. Did I do it wrong? And they're like, did I do it wrong? We're yeah. all just looking at each other's yeah. shit, man. And I'm just like, wait, we got to stop because mm -hmm. it's not serving me. I can't go back in time. She can't go back in time. So I've really been thinking lately about how comparison is like, with social media is like fucking us all up. Yeah, it's so. Do you ever still feel it? I feel oh, it like, I feel it. Like yeah. every day and I got to stop myself every yeah. day. I'm yeah. like, Angie, you don't know her life. Yeah. <laughs> she literally could be going, you don't know her life. There's a part of me that wants, I wanted to tell my <laughs> assistant, unfollow every single person to I, zero. But then there's like an energetic when you're only follow, when you're following zero people, but you have follow, you, you have wow, a follow. I'm I getting chills. I literally voiced messaged my uh, VA today yeah. and I was like, 
I have this idea. Would you go in and unfollow everyone for next week? Because no. you can only do 200 a day. I know. Yeah. So you I have know, to but do then it. I felt weird. I was like, ugh. But, but like, I, I do want to follow like my brother people. and my mom still. <laughs> yeah. Like I had this weird thing where like I want to support people and I like follow clients or past clients. I follow people in the community. Yeah. But then there's also this part of me that's like, love all y'all. Yeah. But like, I don't want the input. I would understand though. Like even if yeah. you, if I saw tomorrow, I'd be like, dude, honestly, I, if I saw zero, I'd be like, respect. I, I wouldn't be like, oh my yeah. God, does she not like me? I know. I think in the past I would think that. And now I realize people are doing that for their own, own sanity. Yeah. And like, if I went to zero, like even not even my mom, I hope people would know like, dude, well, it's literally exactly. not even my mom, you exactly. know? So yeah. not even Clay, not even my yeah. mom. I'm just like zero. Zero. But then what, what would my explore page be? I don't yeah, know. Yeah. What is it then? You things you're searching? Yeah. 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 I think mm. like just stuff that. I try to up. just do food now. This is, oh, this is the I life hack. That. Just do food and recipes. So in the morning, Genius. you're just like, oh, cool, healthy recipes. So it's like a Pinterest. It's just Pinterest. So then you get to think, what would I post? What would I say? Not like all this other stuff. Like I had done follow all the pregnancy stuff, all the boss babe stuff, just to like get out of like any like stuff and just have a clean slate. Yeah. And now it's basically just puppies and tons of food. Just oh food. Because food's God. neutral. Like you're not going to be mad. Mm -hmm. It's some girl made a cake, you know? Yeah. So do it. Do it for That's a month. Good. Everyone do it. Just follow food accounts. Yeah. And then you could really be like, who am I? Yeah. Who am I who really? Am I? Yeah. What do I want? <laughs> Yeah, like why don't I go live my life instead of like yeah. looking at other people's lives? And it, I think that's why conversations like this are so important yeah. because somebody that's on the other end of this, pressing play, watching this video, listening to this, it's like, you know, I always talk about like don't pedestalize other people. Like you yeah. do not fucking know their life. I finally got to a place where like I was meeting a lot of people that I once followed, and all, and I'm like, this is not what I thought <laughs> it was. Yeah. Like this is weird, yeah. you know? And like this doesn't actually make me feel good. And at the yeah. same time, like. It, yeah, you just kind of realize, like, uh, like what are we doing this for? Like, yeah. and and going back to the like, outsourcing your power, like outsourcing your your happiness to your boyfriend, to yeah. your kids, to your, your partner, like, to the money that you make, to social media and the likes that you get. Like, yeah. we're, we are so conditioned to outsource our power and our happiness to things outside of ourselves, which actually kills our aliveness yeah. and it kills our magnetism. Yep. And that's actually the feminine essence is aliveness and it's magnetism. Wow. So I never thought about it yeah. that way. It's all connected. Like wow. everything we're talking about is. It's is, all about being a magnet. Yeah. Yeah. That's truly how mm -hmm. you. All, like yeah. all my good shit has come in when I'm in that just like joyful magnetic energy. I yeah. feel like I don't even have to sell shit. People are just mm -hmm. like, I want to be there. Yeah. And it's like, oh, wow. Why don't I just figure out how to stay in that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But where I lose it is when I start to compare. Mm -hmm. And like, I'll do it sometimes once a week. I'll be like in the morning. I'll tell myself not to scroll, but I'll be like drinking my cacao drink and I'll look and I'll be like, oh, happy for my friend, happy for my friend. Then, oh, fuck. Like, wow. All of a sudden, I need that dress. So consumerism. Mm -hmm. I need to be in Paris. I don't even want to go to Paris. I am like, shit, her kid's so cute. Oh, my God. what Do I need that many kids? Wow, she's got four kids. It looks like they're having so much fun. It's one mm -hmm. photo. Yeah. I have no idea what it's like to raise four children. There's probably a fucking shit show in their house. Their yeah. house probably looks like a fucking disaster. But yet, I see the cute little photo of them in their backyard. Like, family's everything, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, oh, fuck. And then I see... Yeah, this girl, oh, I had a nine-figure launch, you know, which, who even knows if that's true? Right. And I'm like, oh, my God, what's going on? Yeah. All in 30 fucking seconds, dude. Mm -hmm. That's scary. It's really scary. It's like a drug, but, like, not a good drug. Mm -hmm. It's like we're taking a shot of, like, what did we do before that? Would we just wake up and have our own idea of, like, what to create and do? I don't even know. Yeah. And that's what's scary is, like, we're the last generation that grew up without social media. Oh, yeah, because you're, yeah, you're 30. Oh, you're, you're yeah, 29. Be, yeah. Wow. So we're about five years apart. You were born in, what, 94? 94. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, dude, I, you just got to have boundaries with it. Um, I talk all the time about create more than you consume. Yeah. Um, I want to do an entire like four-week masterclass literally on it where I'm teaching personal branding, but the whole goal of the four weeks is that you cannot actually go on your phone at all to create or to consume. I love You that. only can create and to see after 30 days what it does to your brain as a creative mm -hmm. where you have to literally put a blocker on it where you can only like just go on to post and then get off. And just oh, see. And like that's the whole challenge that. for all of us for 30 well, days. Do you have you ever used the app one sec? <laughs> one, one, one sec? sec. Not, one sec, one sec. One nut nut no. sec? <laughs> <laughs> one sec, like one second. Oh. But like one sec. Okay. Okay. Genius. So I have it, except for I went on a launch, so I deleted it for a second because I needed it to be yeah, on yeah, Instagram yeah. more. But I gotta reinstate it on here. But this is a a hack for everyone listening to this and for you too. It's an app called One Sec. S E C, <laughs> and um, it puts like a trigger on any of the apps that you have. So I have it on all of my social media accounts. So every time that you you know, you like trigger finger like Instagram click, yeah. you know, like just sitting there, you know, going to the bathroom, like yeah. drinking my coffee, whatever. Yeah. When you click it, it says time to take a deep breath. 
you have to take a deep breath and it's like, do you actually want to open this right now? And then a thing pops up and you have to set your intention. And then you can set triggers. So when you're scrolling, it says you've been on here for three minutes. Do you oh actually? So it's God. all these like, I call it child proofing. Like I child proof myself. I need this. Yes. It's great. We pay, all need this. Pay for the pro version. It's like not that wow. much. And yeah, it's helped me so much. And then it tells you how many times you tried to open Instagram that day in the last 24 hour period, how many times you actually stopped because the amount of times that I'm just doing it because it's like what I do. Like, it's just like Dude, automatic. I need this. Yeah. And it's like, you gotta do a story addiction. after this about this. Oh yeah. Yeah. One it's sec. so good. This is going to change my life. Mm -hmm. It's great. And then like, I'll actually close it out and I'm like, oh wait, I don't actually want to do that. It keeps me off Instagram so much. And then it tells you how many hours you've actually saved. I had saved like 300 hours or something crazy after having this for like a couple months. Wow. Yeah. And it's, it's just the fact that even just taking a beat, yeah. Like take a beat. Like yeah. just take one second. And if you still want to, that's fine. Right. But at least you like were honest with yourself. Because yeah. I feel like it's almost like makes you look at yourself like, oh, yeah. what am I doing? Ugh. Like yeah. I was just going to the bathroom. Like I was just like, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. What am I searching for right now? I'm searching for inspiration. I'm searching for an idea. Mm -hmm. I'm searching for why. What am I looking for? Like, uh, you know? Yeah. Like, what am I actually going on and there? your like, brain's looking for dopamine. Yeah, it's dopamine. Yeah. It's got to be. Because like, do I genuinely need to know? Like my friend's having her kid's birthday party. It's like, cool. But like I she could just text me that photo or I can go to it or it doesn't, I can miss it. Like it yeah. doesn't, I don't need to see that. Yeah. And I think it's also sad now for this younger generation of women with like seeing the parties they weren't invited to or yeah. now like with dating, how has it affected dating? And then like body image and like so much is edited, right? So like a lot of these LA influencers are like, oh, it's from lemon water. And it's like, no girl, like that's a filter on your skin, which is fine. Just be honest that it's Botox mm -hmm. and a filter. Just say it. Like, why are we gatekeeping as women? Yeah. I'm super honest. If I do Botox again, I'll just tell people. I don't have anything to hide. Like, I don't know. I think that that's weird. That's messing up a lot of women mm -hmm. too. It's like, oh, it's from lemon water. Yeah. It's from lemon water. It's like, you know. <laughs> Hydration. It's, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's all edited. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Or like the amount of money I make. Like, yeah. you know, you like have no idea if that's yeah. actually sales or cash or if they're just like lying completely. Yeah. I like, think don't I don't know. like that. I really, because I know some of these, I don't like that, dude. Yeah. What's going on with that world? That's yeah. weird. Yeah. People are lying a lot about how much money they make. Like, and also like, we got to put into perspective, like 50 to $70,000 a month is like a ton of money for a lot of people, like for right. most people. Like it's right. so much money. It's yeah. so much money. Yeah. Like think of like what most standard Americans are making at their jobs. So I think it's weird that women feel like the pressure now where it's it's shifted. Like, well, I got to now say I make $100,000 a month. It's like, first of all, most people don't even have that desire. They just want to make like 5K a month yeah. just to pay their bills and like have some time freedom. Most people don't need $100,000 a month to live a very, very nice life. Yeah. Very nice life. And so I almost feel bad that I think people feel like they need to say they make that much or put the pressure on themselves to make that much when I think it'd be cool to see a girl who's like, hey guys, I'm just gonna show you how to make 5K months. Like mm -hmm. I make 10K months, I'm gonna show you how to make four to five. Like be so realistic and like yeah. so honest versus like, I just feel like it's getting more and more. Like when mm -hmm. I see the $400,000 a month, I'm like, oh my God, what? Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Like I've, I, I, yeah, I don't think, I've never made that much. So I'm just like, wait, holy shit. That's like, a, that's like $4 million. I mean, mm -hmm net profit or like are we talking like obviously I own part of soul which is a multi-million dollar brand but like from I've made a ton from courses and stuff I never had a four hundred thousand dollar month yeah holy shit yeah and then I feel like shit because I'm like yeah. shit I've done a lot of cool shit I make good money I never mm -hmm. what and is that yeah. consistently or was that one time yeah. I'm confused yeah so I can imagine Sarah in Iowa who's a nurse who makes very hardworking makes fifty thousand dollars a year would love to just make an extra maybe five hundred bucks a month with her Etsy shop she's like what the fuck yeah and now you've lost her. Yeah. So I don't know. What do you think about that whole world? <gasps> what, what's going on in the whole money shifting. world? Yeah. Well, I think. And it's why are we making money sexual now too? We're sexualizing money, which is oh. getting a little weird. What yeah. do you think about this? Okay. Girls posting pictures of them with the money in the bathtub naked. Oh. I'm like yeah. now money, sex. We're getting like it's getting. What's going on? So I think. Yeah. What I okay <laughs> the way that I see <laughs> and money totally in disagree. the online yeah. world. Well. I know I don't disagree okay, with you. Because it's okay if we do. Oh, I just yeah. No. Oh, well, I just love that we have this whole <laughs> yeah. conversation. I mean, I'm not in the money in the bathtub. I think yeah. I think what's happened. <laughs> okay. I analyze this, this shit a lot. Mm -hmm. I analyze this shit a lot. I think the intention was good at the beginning. Yeah. So I think like when we all realize like we can make money online, like we can create businesses, we can have brands, we can yeah. like get paid to be ourselves, which is mm -hmm. like kind of what we do. Yeah. And I'm, but also not because we're doing a lot of systems and like yeah, all these yeah. other things that I'm like, this is not fun. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but you know, that's fine. Um, but it's a part of it. Right. But I think there was this idea that, oh my God, we can make like 10 K months was the biggest thing. Right. Yeah. And then people started making hundred K months and then people started like in there was this idea of, I want to share what's possible. Yeah. I want to tell you what's possible, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's where it originally came from. 
And then it gets skewed yeah. over time because naturally as things do, they morph and they change. And then the comparison starts to come out. And then the idea that, oh my God, I had a 10K month and I had a 20K month and yeah. I had a 30K month. And it was like this bar has to consistently move. And then like, what if I don't, it's like how you felt about your event, right? Of yeah. like a thousand people now has to be 3000 people. Like that's naturally something that happens, I think in the human psyche. And yeah. so we took this thing that actually was like, hey, let me show you the possibility for your yeah. life, which can be very helpful and reorienting for people yeah. to be realize like, I'm in this like nine to five job that I fucking hate and there actually is something like that could be better out there for yeah. me, right? But then the languaging came in, mm. in around like, but you can just do it too. And like, you just have to invest in yourself. Yeah. And you and like, there and is an element of like, get on the plane and go to the event before you're an entrepreneur, like I did for your yeah. event. Go, go get yourself in the room, like stretch yourself a little bit. Don't fucking put yourself in 20 grand of debt because you know, Susan over there did it and, but you don't know her financial situation because yeah. you're, so there's, there's a light to this and then there's also a shadow underbelly to every single thing. Yeah, yeah. And so there's that piece and then the sexual money piece that I'll bring in. Yeah. Is where I think that comes from is yeah. that when we talk back to the feminine and we talk yeah. about the alive frequency, like, and that's what I talk about a lot on the show is like what mm -hmm. brings, what attracts things to you is the frequency that you're emitting. And you can, whether yeah. we use that language or not, like you see when you're in your highest joy yeah. and when you're highest excitement, good shit happens yeah. at yeah. the end of the day, yeah. right? Versus when you're like, fuck, like I have to like yeah. make this money or like this thing yeah. and I have to do this. Then like you, you dull the aliveness. Mm, yeah. And so abund the frequency of abundance, right? Mm -hmm. If we're going to like talk in that language, yeah, yeah, yeah. is actually just being alive and yeah. being magnetic and being joy and being excitement. Mm -hmm. And that's when like, and, and when you create channels for that, whether that's through your course, whether that's yeah. through an event, whether that's mm -hmm. that you're creating a channel that money can come through and it's, you're s circulating it yeah. because you're excited about the thing that you're doing yeah. and you're in the live frequency. And that frequency of creation, which is the frequency of money, is actually the frequency of sex. Because the frequency of sex yeah. is creation. Yeah, and it's like right? like not having shame. Right. Yeah. But um, then it gets distorted yeah. of like, let me like get into yeah. this thing and like just do this and then like abundance will come. It's like, no, baby. Like you you also need the system. You need and it's to, a little like, fucking weird because then like right. the girl who they're selling to like she probably thinks, oh, I got to take a photo shoot with money now. Right. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. So, like, it gets, I, so I don't know. There's a comparison Man. piece that gets distorted. But yeah. the, the intention underneath it is like, I get where it's coming from. But then once yeah. it ends up happening when we sell of like, <laughs> just be in my frequency and then you'll make money. It's like, no. However, calibrating to somebody's frequency is helpful because you get like, um, you get a, a framework you can kind of like see, you can feel into like when you shift your own state, whether yeah. that's going to a retreat, you're going to an event, like you have the embodied um, experience of shifting into yeah. your own aliveness. That's where it's great. But we also yeah. like, what is the thing that you want to sell? Like what are just your Yeah, why are you naked, where, dude? Where, this is turning into like fucking porn. Like right. I'm gonna be serious. Some of it I've looked at, I'm like, yeah. oh my God, this is like, yeah, this is, uh, yeah. What you're selling a course on like, yeah, how to like make money being a coach. Now you're getting into like poor, like this is fucking weird. Yeah. I don't like it. I yeah. think that people, whatever, do their thing. Listen, ladies, do you, boo, whatever you want to do with your yeah. fucking life. But I just, I don't like it. It feels icky. Yeah. And I also think that the whole manifestation of money went too mm -hmm. far. Yeah, it did. I, whether it's, you know, building soul or anything I've done that's made great money, I actually wasn't from manifestation at all. Yeah. I've never once actually manifested money. Now, did I indirectly be in a really good vibration and energy? Yes, yeah. of course, when I'm enjoying it. But I root it back to, am I excited about the thing I'm selling? Right. Yeah, but like every time I've made money, it is so fucking like I'm studying the market. I have a clear niche. The right. offer is really clear. Like I think it's such a disservice to tell women who don't even have an offer yet. They don't have a, they have nothing. They like, as far as the online space, they don't have like a product or a service. Again, let's use the example of a nurse, which is just so different than the online space. And you're telling her just manifest making more money. Dude, she, she works a job that's a fixed income. Right. Like that doesn't really like, that's such a privileged thing to say, to be honest, right. I think, which is yeah. usually like cringe, even that, that word overdone, overused a lot. But like it is because it's like Sarah, who's a nurse, like she makes a D grand. Like what is she supposed to do? Go into the office and be like, just manifesting that my boss now gives me 500 grand a year. Like, right. I don't know. Like, you could sit on your mat all day and stick the yoni eggs up your butthole. And, but, like, that actually won't bring you more money. If you do not yeah. put action with yeah. good energy, a.k.a. manifestation, like, if you don't put good energy behind it, mm -hmm. like, it's not going to, like, you know, yeah. like, yeah. you got to, like, 
it's always come from action, right. which I, I would love to tell girls it was from something else. Like when I made my first million dollars at 27 years old, I would love to tell you it was from manifestation. It wasn't. Yeah. Dude, it was so much work and it was mm -hmm. such a clear intention. I was a really fucking good marketer. Yeah. I just got to be real. So what were you doing? You know what I mean? So what? So I want to break this yeah, down. Yeah. Like, like, what, what, what I feel bad things. So I'm like, shit, was I, yeah. was I manifesting? Should I be manifesting? But I had a really clear offer. So I was an online health coach and I built that. And then women started coming to me saying, oh, teach me how to set up my website, nail my niche, create content, um, my positioning. And so my friend at the time, I remember exactly where I was sitting and I was like, dude, Marie Forleo had B-School, but there wasn't a B-School for wellness professionals yet. Mm. And so I said to her, I was like, I remember I was on a plane. I was like, oh my God, I have a genius idea. I said, I have a multi-million dollar idea. I was kind of kidding, but not. I was like, this, that market needs this. Like I can see the hole in the market. Let's create the B-School, but for wellness coaches. Mm. It was perfect timing, such a clear niche who it was for, such clear positioning. And we went all in and we doubled down. And that was the time when you could run ads like, yeah. oh my God, we would just run ads to wellness network marketers or um, <clears throat> nutritionists and people who wanted to put their practice online or to sell online. And it just went gangbusters. I mean, we sold to, I think, 2,000 people and the offer was like $2,000. Like wow. thousands of people were paying a $2,000 thing. Mm -hmm. And it was live. It was active. We had to get on for the coaching calls and whatnot. And and I mean, money was coming in like a joke. Like it, yeah. it was crazy. We didn't manifest. I don't think we did anything woo-woo. I was mm -hmm. just like, oh, this is a thing. And I did a bunch of surveying. I mean, I would be on so many sales calls a day. Dude, I was doing like nine hours of sales calls a day. Each one wow. was like 30 minutes to an hour. And I had a pen and paper. And then I was typing and I would write down the exact words of what these women were saying. Like, this is what I need help with. This is where I struggle. And we would take that data then and then put it into our, our course. And then I would use their exact, which is, this is what I used to teach in marketing, their exact verbatim language, mm -hmm. reverse engineer it. And I'd be like, yeah. do you feel like blah, blah, blah? And I would take the commonality between like, I don't know, 80 calls I did that week or whatever. I would take it all, put it into a thing, put that as a copy of our sales page. And we were selling like it was a joke. Like yeah. it was, it was insane what was happening. And some could say, like, that was luck. I mean, not really. Like, we were being very intentional with yeah. who it was for. And so I think at the time, like, if I could go back and tell any 27-year-old girl, like, I didn't sit and manifest it. Like, mm -hmm. I worked my ass off every single day till, like, yeah. 10 p.m. Like, I didn't have a life. Well, this is before I had, like, you know, yeah. a partner and ca family or anything, obviously. So I didn't care. But, like, it wasn't for manifesting. So I don't know. This is where I guess I get mad at the money manifestation industry. And I shouldn't be because I do believe in energy and stuff. But yeah. I just think for most people, it would really serve them to just be more practical. Yeah. It I would. don't know. And, and you might feel different because I know you're a little bit more woo than yeah. me, but I just get so mad when I see these girls are like, buy my money manifestation course and like, you'll make money too. It's like, or she might not. Like, she, she doesn't have not. an offer, right. dude. Right. How is she going to make the money? Right. Is she going to like come out of the sky? Yeah. Yeah. I don't so know. my argue, my, yeah. My, yeah. my caveat to that is I will <laughs> argue that you were manifesting doing that while you were doing that. Oh. Through action. Through action. Through yeah. action and through your energy because it's it's the energy that, that you're putting. Yeah. That's what manifestation is. Uh, but yeah. people are thinking like, oh, manifestation is just like, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to journal about it. I'm going to like feel into the vibration of it and then it's going to come to me. Yeah. And that's like not it. Okay. But that's where the distortion comes in because there's so mm -hmm. many people that try to take that knowledge and then put it into a course and be like, yeah, so like now you're going to make money. And it's like, no. Yeah, it's just a money that. mindset course. Which right. if, it's for, if a girl doesn't already have an offer or making some decent money – how are you that selling that to a, a girl who isn't like that's only for like online coaches I guess then it's right? like because, only half of it because yeah, you, you need the action you need the systems you need like an actual business you need model. A business model yeah because right. customers aren't gonna be like oh I knew you were sitting on the couch today thinking of right, this so I'm gonna right. buy your nothingness yeah. like what are they buying yeah like, what are they doing yeah yeah it's just crazy looking back I was like wait mm -hmm. when I was 27 I made a shitload of money and like so fast what did I do and I was like oh. I guess, yeah, it was like aligned energy and clarity with mm -hmm. a really clear offer. It was like both right. of those Which coming together. Which is what true manifestation is. Ah, uh, yeah. 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 I think maybe it's like the money mindset stuff then yeah. that is just like just thinking about being right. rich. It's like, yeah. well, that's nice and all. I think we, yeah. I think a lot of maybe people out there are thinking about being rich. Yeah. But then if that was all it took, then we would, everybody would mm -hmm. be rich. Yeah. There's got to be an element to it of like, let's be honest, timing, market mm -hmm. fit, clarity, yeah. a niche. Like some of it's just luck and timing too. Mm -hmm. Like there's some, People on Shark Tank, where it's like it was the perfect product at the perfect time. Yeah. They knew who they were talking to and it worked. Yeah. Like a lot of it's also timing. Yeah. It's like the unsexy side. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I mean, this is people cancel me. I don't care. It's true. I don't it's care. It's really, really true. I'm, I'm <laughs> I know a bunch of mindset coach is going to cancel yeah. me. That's okay. But hopefully she agrees that it also yeah. takes action. You know it what does. I mean? uh, well, yeah. I think that's what people are seeing. And I think that's also why it's so important to be yeah. discerning in this space. And it's yeah. so important to be discerning like what you sign up for and like what you like yes. feel into like, 
the integrity and the authenticity of anybody that you're learning from. Yeah. And are they actually walking that walk in? And are they revealing the truth of their humanness? And are they – like there's yeah. so much with whatever, like whoever you learn from, whatever you learn from in this space. Yeah, like I just think of like – when I see some of this funny myself, I was telling my friend this the other day. I'm like I think of like the single mom with three kids who's like working two jobs just to get by yeah. on food stamps. And her scrolling and seeing a post of some girl sitting on her couch being like, guys, the reason you're struggling is like you're just not in the vibration of money. It's yeah. like, fuck off. That yeah. woman is literally working so hard. Yeah. It's kind of like a thing rich people say. Right. It's yeah. like, let's yeah. just be honest. And that's where I don't like it because I'm like, now I realize, I'm like, oh my God, there were so many things I said that I didn't realize were not applicable to most hardworking people. Like totally. I even would say some of that a little bit. And now yeah. I'm like, I just see it so differently I now. Know. I'm like, I can imagine that woman scrolling and being like, dude, I'm on fucking food stamps and I'm trying to figure shit out. And not in like a victim way, but in like, she's working three jobs. She's got three kids. Like she hasn't set up an online business or isn't in that world. So to be telling her like, like she's not manifesting enough. Yeah. It's like, you really think that's her problem? Totally. Like, let's tell the children starving in, you know, Africa. Yeah. Oh, they're not manifesting hard enough. Yeah. Like, come on. Yeah. That's not why they're not having food. Yeah. I don't know. Have you ever thought about it? That? Yeah. That's maybe no, very totally. extreme of me, yeah. but like, come on. Yeah. No, I, I totally get it. I mean, I don't know if they're necessarily seeing the content either. I think, True. I think we also might be like in a niche around like the I coaching so. space and what, yeah. like, I don't, cause I think a lot of people actually have never even heard of the money mindset. Like, okay. Good. Cause I started to feel bad. I yeah. was like, oh my God. Like I'm thinking of women who are seeing this thinking like, oh my God. But like, I also think it's true. Like I, I, I get it. I've also said, I used to say some of that stuff too. And like now I feel like I yeah. get it on a whole different level because yeah. of like the path that I've walked over this last year of just like, and like the stuff that I've seen. Yeah. Just like, yeah. I'm like, oh. I feel like you're a great integration of both. Like I think it's like, you know, you got to like understand it's like your life is like what you create it and the energy and all of that, like totally. And like when it comes to business, like some of it's just business yeah. too. Yeah. There's like billionaires out there who don't have a good mindset at all. At and all. they're not in the energy of attracting money, but they have a really great product. So right. like that also sucks too, yeah. because that is like, what the fuck? That's unfair. Mm -hmm. But that, that, that happens too. So I, I just started to recently be like, what is it really about? Yeah. <laughs> but when it comes to businesses like ours, where we have personal brands, I have realized in this specific niche, my energy, the better my energy is, the more money I make because I'm in a cleaner energy. Yeah. So yes, that's true yeah. there for sure. And yeah. in this industry. Well, and yeah. Do you feel good? I think that's yeah. like what matters. Do you feel connected? Do yeah. you feel alive? Do you have good relationships? Who are you yeah. surrounded by? What are you doing on a daily basis? Like, how do you feel in that? Like, yeah. that's what, that's more of my North Star yeah. now. And like, the thing that I'll say is like, can you manifest a life that feels just as good as it looks? Yeah. Like, and it's not just about like the things and like the stuff Ooh, and like all of that. that. But like, how are you feeling on the way there? Like, I would much rather make way less money, but have a really beautiful life that I love than being like, I'm going to crush it. And like, yeah, you know, yeah. just for the sake of doing that and saying that I can, but then feel empty on the inside. Yeah, totally. And I think that's like what people are actually after is like true fulfillment. Yeah. I think we all just want to be happy, man. Yeah. I don't think most people it's because like, what's the money bringing? Freedom, which ultimately brings what? Happiness. We're all yeah. just searching for happiness. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So it's like, I think people sit down and say, how much do you really need to live? Because I used to think it was a ton more. And now I'm like, wow, that's weird that I put that pressure on myself at 27 years old to make like $5 million a year. Like, I didn't need that. What do you yeah. mean? Like, yeah. I would have been happy with just a few hundred grand a year. Like, yeah. I don't know why I put that pressure on myself because I was in that world where I was living in LA, which is like insane how much money is there. And so I felt like if I make even 100, 200K a year, I'm a piece of shit. Like, that's not enough. Like, I literally remember being in a yoga studio. It was like the first week I moved there. And I moved from Chicago where $100,000 a year was a lot of money, especially a few years ago. I was like, oh my God, if I can make a hundred grand a year, I'll be loaded. And I remember a girl in the yoga studio was telling her friend, she's like, dude, yeah. And I don't know. I was only making like 150K last year. Like I basically was poor, you know? And I remember being like, oh my God, welcome to like this new world. Like what mm. is happening? And I had never heard that being in Chicago. Like yeah. most of my friends weren't even making that much in their mid twenties. And so Obviously, it's more expensive to live in LA, but I remember that moment being like, holy mm -hmm. shit. Like it's to them, world. that is poor. Like, yeah. oh, wow. So then I was like, I got to make a million dollars a year mm -hmm. at least. And then I got it. And it just kept growing. Yeah. All because I thought if I didn't, I'd be a loser. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> totally. And then we go back to the comparison and then around it goes. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, holy it's shit. it's such an important conversation. I didn't even think we talked about this today though. It's crazy yeah. how it got there. I don't know. We I like we never talk about, about like anything. Either. Well, like yeah. you're talking about like, yeah, the, the feminist movement, how it went too far and just extremes of anything. Yeah. yeah. It's fascinating to mm -hmm. me because I, I can be such an extremist and I need to stop.
being oh, an extremist. We're 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 learning. We're yeah. learning the balance on yeah. the way. You know, we're learning how to be in our feminine and aliveness, and also like create the fucking shit that we want to create. Feminine and masculine. Yeah, energy. yeah. we're balancing our chi. <laughs> I'm like, I want to be the yeah. perfect balance of both. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. think it's just an ever evolving like human journey, and like, yeah. can we just be honest and can we be real with where we're at in the moment, and yeah. can we? be surrounded by other people that are doing beautiful things that, you know, that we love. And yeah. can we remain connected to ourselves in the process of creating what we want yeah. to create? And I think yeah. that's it. Yeah. So before we wrap up, I want to talk about your event yeah. that you are creating yeah. here in Austin, yeah. which I'll be at, <gasps> um, and how you are creating a space for women to do this and to connect to their joy yeah. and to the to that frequency of like what they want to create, like the frequency of abundance and aliveness, which yeah. is not probably how you would say it in your marketing. But yeah, you guys have to be naked. Yeah, yeah, there. yeah. it's a naked party. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be throwing dollar bills at you naked. That sounds yeah. wrong, but that's what's happening. Come to Austin. No, <laughs> yeah, but tell us about what you're creating. Yeah, I feel like I should just say the name here. Why not? Like exclusive. Sneak Are we peak. exclusive? <laughs> <laughs> no, Angie has literally been on her stories. Like everybody guess. Everybody yeah. guess. It starts with an R. You won't guess and, it. And no one has guessed. You're gonna. Let Everyone them says no. Here, I would be honored. I will. I will wow. do it. Why not? This comes, you know this comes out like in a week and a half, two weeks. You know Are what? You okay with it? It's okay. <gasps> wow. Because I was going to release it probably in the next few weeks anyway. Great. I'm trying to figure out a cool video to make like a cool funny promo video where we're going to say it then in the video. Or I'll just like, I got to figure out a cool way to say it. Or I'm going to say it in my podcast. You got to go listen to the podcast. I'm trying to figure mm -hmm. out the cool way to like, where should I put it? You know? I'm thinking a funny mm -hmm. video and then the podcast. I don't know, just so it gets more a lot of downloads. Like, well, go listen. I'll tell you when we're dropping this. Oh yeah, <laughs> drop it all at the same time yeah. and go listen. Put it on your podcast. Yeah, and then I'll say like, oh. you guys go listen and I'll promo it on yeah, mine too. Yeah, true. That's true. Okay, yeah. that's a good idea. Yeah, everyone thought I was rejuvenate, re relive or something. I couldn't or... figure it out. I was trying to wow. think of it. And yeah, I, was like, I don't know. So it came to me in a dream. It was like you need to do this and have this event. And it initially started with it being a retreat. Like I, it sounds like a wellness retreat or something for women. But then I was like, oh, that's not it. I don't want to put on small retreats. So then I kind of have gotten this vision, which we'll talk about like this epic female dance party meets inspiration meets fun. But um, the name of the event is Reset. <laughs> so good. Which is so fun because even that word just feels so good. Mm -hmm. Like who didn't love recess? Yeah. Like who, enough of school. We got to go to recess, you mm -hmm. know? And so the whole promo video is kind of like a comedic ad basically on like this isn't a bro event where you're learning like sales and funnels and marketing like we're gonna do what we really want to do recess woo and it's like a whole fun thing mm -hmm. and so yeah it's always been very clear to me that I'm here to bring joy but I wanted to really lean into that more with my career and my brand and so I've been brainstorming different ways that feel really good and for some reason I just am getting this vision of of like take all the fun juicy amazing parts of pays to be brave in the event I did but like how do we amp that up even more and then make it relevant to like where I'm at and what I want and so I think the event is is really like inspiration meets comedy meets a dance party and you leave feeling so fucking alive. You met all these cool chicks. You feel inspired. You feel creative. You feel like you have these ideas for your business now. Mm -hmm. You feel like you are so clear. You're, you're not feeling burnt out anymore. Like I think so many women, we're just all burnt out. And so yeah. we need this place to come escape and play. And it's proven, obviously, that play literally changes our brain. And, and as adults, we stopped playing. We're not part of sports yeah. anymore. We're not at school with our friends anymore. It's like we're just all working all day. And yeah. so I really feel like this is going to be the antithesis to the business event where it's like you come here to escape and let go. And indirectly, it's actually the yeah. medicine for your business. But it's really to, yeah, be the recess for your soul, for your mind, for your body, just to fucking let go and have fun. And um, yeah, it's going to be in the fall. And I think it's going to, yeah, I'm still figuring out the exact structure of it because I have a bunch of different ideas of what I want to implement. But what we were talking about downstairs mm -hmm. is like the core of it is in dancing and embodiment, uh, speaking motivational, and then like a huge piece is on connection. Like these women yeah. hanging out, connecting, doing exercises because we're all lonely. Everyone wants friends. And so, yeah. you know, <laughs> not we're all behind a screen. Not lonely. I'm not lonely yeah. actually, but like a lot of yeah. people are. Like I yeah. think it it's such a gift to have intentional, awesome girlfriends in your life. And like yeah. a lot of women in my audience, they will tell me, I don't have a lot of friends who get me and I don't know how to have fun again. Yeah. And to me, like my brand word is fun. I'm like, how do I help people have fun? Yeah. Because most people don't know how to have fun anymore. It's like they go to their serious job and they come home and they have their, all the responsibilities of family and work. And it's just so stressful. And it's so sad for me to get that DM of, yeah. I don't know how to have fun anymore. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, shit, if we could have fun and play, what magic could be unlocked from that? 
what creative idea are you going to get? What new friend are you going to meet? Like, that's where I think magic happens. And we see this all the time. There's science to back it up now. The power of play, dancing, fun. It's it's proven that it literally changes our serotonin, our dopamine, the chemicals in our brain. Um, when you're laughing with someone, we're able to connect faster, right? So that's why comedy, like people, I think that's why people usually connect with my brand fairly quickly is because I'm disarming and I'm, I'm bringing down yeah. the barrier because I'm laughing and I'm self-deprecating. And so same thing with dance or anything. It's like, if we dance together, like we're connecting more. Mm -hmm. Like, cause it's like, oh, you're being weird. I'm being weird. We're being goofy. We're letting our bodies go. So I, I really want to bring dance into it because it's changed my life. As I was telling you, it literally helped me from depression, anxiety so much this last year. And so I want to share that magic with women, especially if you're not a professional dancer. That's who I, I don't want professional dancers coming. I mean, if you are, that's fine. You can come. But like, it's not about like, ooh, let me see your dance moves. You know, it's like, we're just freestyling and mm -hmm. we're going crazy and we're turning on the lights and we're just like, Having like like dancing like you did with your girlfriends when you had slumber parties. Yeah. Remember? And you would just like yeah. blast Bernie Spears and you'd just be like, woo. So um, yeah, you're jumping on the bed, having fun. That's that's the energy I want to bring back to people. Cause I think mm -hmm. we're I think we're missing it. Especially, yeah. gosh, like the COVID years, we like so much of us, so many of us didn't go out or anything, you know? So I think that um, yeah, I wanna bring it back. So I yeah. can't wait. Yeah, I'm so excited. Fun. Full circle moment from I know from five years ago to I now. Know. And I think it's, it's, I mean, Angie throws the best events. So oh. you have, you I just really like do it on up. parties. It's so much fun. That would be my dream. Yeah. Like that's my dream job. I just want to put on parties. Yeah. I, I'm like, I love how that. would I make that a sustainable job? Just put on parties all the time. Also it would be stressful. Yeah. Because it's like these events are expensive. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, I would yeah. love to get to the point where I do two a year. Maybe they're a little bit smaller, but two mm. a year. I don't know. And I go like one here and maybe one in like a different yeah. city or something. I don't know. I just know I love putting on live experiences. It's so good. Like I love yeah. the goodie bags. I love I love all of it. I love like mm -hmm. helping with the planning. I love creating an experience and like yeah. what is the room going to look like and where are they going to meet each other and like every little fucking detail. I love it. Mm -hmm. I and love all it. the magic that happens and unfolds in the moments that you can't see. Like yeah. what even happened with me, right? Of like I was the girl sitting there Googling how to be happy. Yeah. And so one of the women listening to this like Keep an eye out for Angie's events. Yeah. If you're if you're like, oh, you know, I, I want to go, but I'm nervous. Or like, I wasn't an entrepreneur at the time. Yeah. Or like, you know, I I don't have friends around me. Like, mm -hmm. if you are in that space right now, like, look what I did five years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and now here we are. And like it's that's what these events do, is I think yeah. that they they really catapult you into like, I don't want to say your next level, because it's like it's a byproduct of just like who you become, even just in two, three days yeah. being in a, in a space like this and yeah. who you meet. Like every single time I've gone to something like this, I always meet the next person that like yeah. seeds this thing or then it ends up having me go over here. And like you can't Ugh. ever know what the path is going to be. But if you like have it on your heart to be in spaces like this, what you can connect the dots backwards yep. and be like, oh, wow, like this, the event I went to five years ago, your event was the catalyst for literally everything. We wouldn't be sitting here right now yeah. if that wasn't for that. So yeah. it's just really beautiful. And I'm excited to oh. come back. I'm excited to be a part of it. And then yeah. recess. Know, you know, and recess and Woo. play and have fun and meet the women and everything. I'm surprised so. you didn't guess. I feel like you would have guessed. You're I really know. Close. Wow. That's cool though that you didn't almost. No, it's I like, didn't. Because I assume people know. I'm like, come on, you guys. It like, was no, it's five letter one. word starts with an R. And then I gave the, one of them, the stories I said, um, the tip is, or the the hint is, um, the ultimate playground for the ambitious woman. And then a few got it because they're like, okay. playground. playground. But still then they're like, rejuvenate. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, no, yeah. the playground. They're like, yeah, they're, yeah. what else did I hear? Like, re renew or something. I'm like, oh, man. Close, not quite. Yeah, so not now quite. between here I released it, but then I got to figure out another fun way. I think, yeah, I have this idea for this video I want to film with my videographer where it's then we would release it there. But I want to find a fun way. I don't know. It's just something fun to do. Yeah. Just keep the name. No, the like name is like thing. you've totally seeded it really well. So yeah, people I like want to know. Like, yeah. It. Yeah. It's exciting. <laughs> so so come to recess. Come to recess. Yeah. And meet us both. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll both come be party. There. Come party. It'll be so fun. Yeah. Um, and we didn't even talk about soul, but oh, yeah. We'll just yeah. <laughs> but uh she has a great <laughs> <laughs> We talked about money mindset. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, basically get the sleepy drink because I drink it every night legitimately. It yeah. tastes so good. It's like hot chocolate, but you have gummies and you have all the things. Yeah. It's a CBD brand. And we, I'll ask Jazz. She's yeah. an assistant, right? Yeah. I have, I have a code. I don't remember what it is. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, You're like, we'll, we'll put, put it in here. In the show notes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Check it out. Things. Getsoul.com. Yeah. We also have our brand new. And the only reason I'm saying this is because I know 
it is literally our new, we cannot even keep it on the shelves. It's so hot is our new microdose yeah. out of office, yeah. um, which I didn't realize so many people wanted THC. Wait, weren't you like, nobody's going to want that? Yep. Yeah. I literally was like, oh, no. And then my brother texted me. He's like, yo, we can't even keep it in stock. Like, this is crazy. Like, to so give people cool. perspective, like behind the scenes business, like it's, it, the numbers that out of office is doing in just a few weeks is out numbering like sleepy, our sleepy line, which is like our best wow. seller of years. So like, it's insane. So it's now pivoting a bit. Now we're all, always going to have Soul and VR CBD line with our gummies and everything. So don't worry. If you love Soul, like you can always still get that. But additionally on that, Mike and I might, we might now be going into the microdose space with like a drink. Like we might be really going into a whole new world wow. now because it's the demand is, we didn't know this, but so many people want it and need it. And it's helping so many people. Like so many people are so anxious and that THC CBD blend really helps them mm. to sleep the anxiety, the pain. Some people CBD is not enough. Some it is and it's great and some it's not. They need yeah. like a little edge of that. And so we're noticing a lot of these, a lot of these soccer moms, they're all about it. It's all the moms. They're like, give me a break. Wow. I need to be out of office. And so check that out. Check out the sleepy drink. Yeah. Check it so out. Good. It's so delicious. Yeah. Everything tastes good. So that makes it fun. It does. Um, You're going to want to eat all the gummies though. So be careful. Not be I careful. Actually, you can that. eat the whole thing and you'll be fine. There's no toxicity level, but just the sleepy ones don't eat the all 30. Mm -hmm. But you can eat the months worth in one sitting, technically, of the other ones. I've done, I, I've done I eat it. a few a day. <laughs> yeah. It's a really good. Yeah, I eat like yeah. two at night. And then sometimes like really stressful days, I'll have some more and I'm fine. So I know I thought about it before this. I was like, I have no product for her because I actually used it all. Yeah. But yeah, Aww. really good. So check it out in the show notes. Andy, yeah. thank you so much for this being here. This is so good. So fun. Oh my God. We could, we need to do more. Yeah. We could just do like a whole series You together. could just be like a, a recurring guest. Yeah. You just come on. It's fucking like, Angie. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking Angie. Exactly. So um, come <laughs> to our next podcast <laughs> and all the podcasts after that. Well, we have so many topics we, to cover. Yeah, you know, I'm like, we got to talk we about dating, boys, mm -hmm. just more stuff. Yeah, more stuff. We can even do a live one. You're doing a, a, a live one yeah. soon, but that could be something too. I we totally have do that. awesome. That would the be next fun. one. Yeah I'm, yeah, I'm thinking of doing a few of them. I just want to like yeah. start and try one and then be like, okay, what other girls I want to do this with? Is this something people like? I literally just like pulled it out of my butt and I was like, okay, well, am I even going to like this format? But I think I will. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. But I feel like I could pull those off every few months. They're what so date is the live one? This one's April 19th in Austin. And it's just a few of us. I think we're just going to do a panel because I'm not going to like sit and interview yeah. four people for four hours. Um, we're just taking their questions and then I'll air that audio of the Q&A on the show. And then the rest of it's just like hanging out, girls perfect. networking. So chill. Well, I this mean, will compared come out to like before then too. Oh, so if anybody perfect. is in or around the Austin area, or if yeah. you want to fly in, because that's awesome. Yeah. Um, Angie's doing a live podcast yeah. at Kuya, yeah. and we'll post it. We'll put it in the show notes cool. as long as I get the link from you. Um, yeah, it's yeah. chill. I mean, compared to my so, other events, this feels so easy. Yeah, and it's just like an in like a few hours. It's right? like networking meets meet some cool chicks meets. We're gonna yeah. answer your questions on a podcast. And yeah, because originally I was gonna do like full blown podcasts with everyone, thirty minutes, and then Krista. Um, my friend who I'm interviewing on there from almost 30, she was like, dude, like people don't want to sit and watch like, like even this right now, if there was girls in the room, it'd be cool. Yeah. But like we got to be more intimate and in depth, I think almost cause there's like not people there yeah. and like they'd rather us talk to them. Yeah. We sense, need to like be, answer be, like, their with questions. The audience. Yeah, yeah. Like, hey. So I think instead these, these events are more so for the Q and A and the panel mm -hmm. and then podcast interviews are like their own separate yeah. thing like this. Yeah. I don't know. I've been, it. I've been thinking about this lately cause I'm like, shit. I got to figure out what this format's going to be. So fun. Yeah. So fun. Well, it'll, it'll be, be great. You have all the things coming up and yeah. check out Angie, check out all the things. Like I'm clearly going to be yeah. there and around and at the, fun. yeah, in-person stuff because we're both here in Austin. And you're the best. Just so this fun. was so good, Rachel. So much fun. You're so good at podcasting. Thanks. You really are. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You're like fun to podcast Appreciate with. That. Where a lot of people, it's not. You're like, oh God. You're like, okay. <laughs> They're like, wait, are you born? Like, we're an hour and 23 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, what's your favorite dinosaur? I'm like, oh God. Like, what's your secret to success? You're like, oh God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All the questions. What's I don't even think I asked you a single question. <laughs> What's your favorite motivational quote? It's like, shoot me in yeah. the face, you know? Mm -hmm. So this was like rejuvenating, oh, refreshing. Thank you. It was a recess. I'm so glad. It was a recess. <laughs> we have fun on the show. <laughs> I texted her at the beginning and I said, I'm wearing sweatpants and slippers. So yeah. just so I'm you like, know, okay, so I kept my PJs on. This is the on. vibe that we're going for. <laughs> so anyway, with that, thanks for listening to the It's Fucking Spiritual Podcast. And we'll see you in the next episode. Bye. <laughs> Great vibe. <laughs> I'm like, what camera do I look at? Shit. Thank you for listening to the It's Fucking Spiritual podcast. I am so glad that you're here. And if this episode resonated with you, I invite you to share this with a friend that you feel needs to hear it. And if you are really feeling the love and support for this show, this podcast thrives off of your listens and your reviews. So I would love if you could leave us an honest review. We would love to hear your feedback, your thoughts, your questions, and it helps us get this podcast in the hands of more people and would mean so much to me to receive your support. 
So thank you.